Migos, what's good? <clears throat> Sorry, I missed both my videos last week. It's been a bit hectic, to say the least, uh, out my way between the old lady's been having to work extra, and I've been having to work extra, and of course now traffic goes down to like zero on the highway. It's the perfect time to talk. It's the weekend. I just got off work. It's Sunday afternoon. It's fairly freaking nice out. I'm going to go take the dollar to the park after this, but I want to talk a little bit with you guys. Um, we got some goodies coming in on Tuesday. Um, whatever, I don't know. I'm going to be running to watch this anyway. So I got a call from 030034. Sorry. Um, not last week, but the week before. They want me to make videos on their tunes and their TCU file. What do you freaking know? How freaking awesome is that? So they're sending over um, their flashing cable. And uh, I got to, you know, you do it on the computer software. Stage 2 TCU which uh, messes with launch control, faster shifts, uh, holding extra torque, um, everything I want in a TCU tune. This TCU tune, I believe, is just, um, and that changes like shifting points and uh, drive and S, and um, basically it should be like a really good, powerful, uh, really good TCU tune. I don't even know what words to explain. This is my first DSG car, so I've never had like, um, this is the only DSG tune I've ever had, is, is with Racing Line. I'm not talking down on them or anything. Um, we're not even going to compare uh, TCUs or ECU files. Made that very clear with Racing Line and 034. We're not going to compare. We're comparing 034 to stock. Um, no, I will be doing dragging time, draggy times and stuff with uh, 034 software and whatnot, but uh, we're not going to be comparing tunes. These guys are. You guys don't know Racing Line and 034, they're sister companies, and I love them both dearly. I mean, between those two companies, uh, EQT, Verkline, and uh, who else? Like Do88 and uh, DBV2, like you know, my, my top companies. And to be able to work so closely with DBV2 and 034 and Racing Line and Verkline, like my life is like this past year has been so freaking good to me. Uh, like in the automotive wise and and life wise, like seeing my, my daughter's just growing like a weed. She's throwing her own diapers away now. She's learning stuff with her hands. All done more. She's like, uh, like saying different things, not full words, but she's like, you know, she's throwing half words out there, like oh, like she wants her sippy cup and stuff. Just. And seeing her walk, seeing just everything, just everything this year in the past year, the past couple of years have been great. Things are just getting better and better and more awesome, um, both at home, at work, in the automotive side of life. Like, I, your boy is blessed, and I couldn't be happier. And the channel's growing, like no tomorrow, and I'm so happy. Um, anyway, so zero three four, we're gonna be testing. Uh, I don't think I'm really going to test their 91 tune unless they really want me to, but definitely their 93 tune and their E85 tune. Now, um, this is just stage one, so it's supposed to be for, you know, stock downpipe, stock intercooler, stock intake. I don't know if I'm going to get a check engine light from the uh, from it being stage one. I actually, I should probably ask about that, but uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to test all that, and then we'll uh, mix and match and see how... This ECU matches with their TCU, and we can we can do that vice versa as well, just to see see how mixed results go. Um, maybe I won't even post that. Maybe I'll just keep that for myself because I'm just very curious. And then we're like I keep talking about it, guys. You guys see my social media posts. We are this freaking close from ordering up that massive DBV2 intercooler and uh, charge and um, throttle pipe. We are right there. My buddy Michael just installed his on his girlfriend's car the other day, and the fitment's perfect. It looks so meaty behind the grill. It's awesome. And I actually, that reminds me, speaking of DVB2, we haven't, I meant to do another video, which I probably still will do, but um, this intake is so freaking loud. Listen to this thing. Give me a little bit of room. This thing is so great I love it I freaking love it I took one of my uh, work buddies today with me to lunch and we got some some Chinese and he was like holy shit that intake dude I'm like yeah dude, it is like suffocatingly beautiful 
is the way I would describe it. It's just a, like juice. And when it's screaming, I should what I should do one of these nights is shove the GoPro in the engine bay with the filter off. When the filter's off, it just gives it like just an extra little bit of like hertz range or something like it's just slightly more high pitch and it's just so good speaking of uh, the last time i went out without the intake not not nothing, nothing bad happened but um do you guys remember that video which was i think the last real video i posted uh we went out to try and get that that 10 second run and i was consistently about 0.2 slower than my fastest run and it had me thinking i was like well did i put too much X8 or X98 in the car. I was like, maybe I put a little bit too much E and the car didn't like it. Uh, maybe it wasn't like the tune wasn't able to compensate for enough, like the extra ethanol in the tanks. You know, that the fuel system gets taxed more when you add ethanol. It takes about 30% more fuel to run full E85. I and mean, even though I just had a couple gallons in the car, but so I put, um, what's it called? Just regular pump E85 in the same. Because, like, when I filled up the, the day I made my record run of 11.18, I also filled up my other BP jug full of that same ethanol. So, last weekend, I went out with that same ethanol and um, went to go do, sorry, there's a lot of traffic. Went to go do some runs and stuff. Wound up meeting up with a crew of guys down south, and we went out and did, like, a little, uh, it was like a seven-car shootout. And here, I'll play the clip. dead even I did the dragging it was seven four on the dot my best like in my my normal runs are in like the, the low seven threes and my best is a seven two two in the eighth my car still then you know even with that switching back to the regular ethanol wasn't up to par and you could feel it in the mid-range it just wasn't there um, so I was thinking what else did I do I changed out intakes I put the turbo blanket on and I did spark plugs I was like, well, and, and that fuel. So I was like, well, I know eliminated being fuel because I did uh, uh, less of a blend just to make sure and, and, and change fuels that, was, that wasn't the fuel. So I was like, let me do spark plugs. I highly doubt it's going to be the intake, and I guarantee it has nothing to do with the uh, turbo blanket. So the plugs I had in the car are the IKH24s, number four, whatever, Denzos. I had them gapped to 0.22. So I went back to my OEM plugs, like the NGK, OEM, NGKs, gapped at 0 .024. And I did this on a Sunday afternoon. So it was Monday when I got to drive the car. It had rained that day and it got really sunny out, really. It was like 75, but like almost 80% humidity. And the car was pulling better than what it was Saturday night when we went out and raced um, with the DA. The DA difference was like, I think 1,500. So it was like negative something. Saturday night and then positive like, I don't know, a thousand something uh, Monday afternoon. The car was pulling better Monday afternoon than what it was Saturday night. And even right now, the car is pulling better than what it was. So I don't know if it's because I went down or up, whatever you want to call it, in the heat range. I changed heat ranges by one and got it down to 0 0.22 or 0 0.22. And then these are, you know, the normal heat range, which I think is 8, and it's at 0 0.024. So... Whatever, I don't know if it was, like I said, the heat range or the gap size, but uh, the car wasn't liking it. So now that I know, like I should have listened to Ben, Ben, if you're watching, he told me not to even go to a step holder plug, and I was being hard-headed. I figured they wouldn't hurt, and they did. <laughs> so these plugs are back in, and I haven't ran E really since I put these back in. So this coming week, when I get the 034 tune, I'll put a little bit of E in the tank, and we'll go mess around, see what kind of times we can get. Friday, I'm gonna try and leave work a little bit early. There's a take it off the streets event up there at VMP, quarter mile. My boy Jesse with the RS3 is going. He's figured out some of his, um, wouldn't say issues, but complications. Um, he's just, you know, beginning to learn. Some of you guys commented the car wasn't 
whatever. It's a brand new build, so he's he's learning. The car's learning. And he's, he's still on, he's on like Indy Firehawk 500, so all that power on, on those tires isn't ideal. Um, I think he's ordering up some DR2 soon. Either way, whatever. So we're going back up there Friday. Looks to be decent weather, and uh, hopefully we won't sit in the pits for forever, but this time I'm not going to let my car get hot. Uh, I'm not going to let it run. I'm going to like literally push it as far as I can until they tell me to get in my car and turn it on. So I'll uh, be looking out for that. That'll be next week sometime. So we got a bunch of stuff going. And 034 is also sending um, a set of their red coil packs. The red coil packs have the uh, the heat sinks on them. And I've been wanting to do red coil packs to kind of spice up the bay. I know, like, oh my God, the coil packs stick with OEM. I know, but hey, they're sending them over. We're gonna test them. We're gonna give our honest review. See if they're good, see if they're crap, see if they're just the same. Or It's like when I, I ran the APR coil packs, the blue ones, my buddy Ryan, Shout out to Ryan. Uh, he's got an RS3 now. He's out in Hawaii. Uh, he got me those as a gift. And uh, I didn't see anything detrimental. I never had a misfire with them. Never had any problems with them. Uh, a lot of people, you know, one person has one issue and, and automatically they're junk, you know. You know, guys, you guys don't know how to it is. But I'm excited to try those. I'm excited to spice up the bay a little bit. But uh, I am very happy that I found a crew that actually goes out and does dig racing for cash like it's a $50 buy-in seven cars so I have potential to win $450 and um so what happened with that with that race we we ran neck and neck and we went back to our spot because we were like um we didn't do poker chips we did cards so you know twos with twos threes with threes whatever so we went back to review the footage and the guy that was holding the event he was like well, either you two can decide to rerun or you can leave it up to the flagger to make the call. And me and the guy that I raced were talking and he was like, I'm down to rerun, that's cool, whatever, whatever. But then he goes up to when the flagger's reviewing the video and the flagger was like, well, it's gonna be up to you guys unless you want me to decide. And dude was like, well, who would you pick if you were to decide? And he's like, well, I would say the Subaru one. And he was like, all right, that's good. That's good enough for me, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, dude, you just said that we were gonna rerun. Like, it's up to us. You asked him like for his opinion on like he just kind of like backed his way into it total I mean I'm not gonna get upset about it it's whatever I, had, I still had fun and uh, now I'm in the group chat to go out and, and do more stuff in the future I didn't want to make a scene about it but he also the same thing happened he made it to the finals against my buddy with an a3 with an is 38 plus or whatever and uh, they basically were neck and neck but the flashlight died at the end so you couldn't see like within like the last five frames, one car was in front of the other and vice versa. But because the flashlight was out, the dude threw a fit, even though I, uh, to most of us, it was like the Audi, the A3 clearly won, but so he wanted to rerun it. So we go back to the spot and the A3 forgot to turn off his damn traction control. The traction control kicked in and pulled all the time and whatever so that's super wind up winning but you know had i had these spark plugs back in at the time i would have made it to the end it would have been me and the other audi it would have been a good race between me and him because he's on the is 38 with full ethanol custom tuned so it, it would have been an interesting race anyway because i like there was mustangs there like high horsepower mustangs and uh a high horsepower dsm and the road, I mean, it was kind of chilly that night. Not not too chilly, but chilly enough, and the road's not prepped. So everybody was spinning, you know? So it was like a, basically up for the all-wheel drive cars to take home the W, and uh, I mean, that is what happened, but I could definitely beat that Subaru. That Subaru was making like, I think he said like 520 or 540 to the wheels, and it's a manual. So it takes that much, over 100 more horsepower than me, just to make the same time, because it's a manual. I, you know, I don't really know the whole how well that turbo flows with that motor. I can't really speak on the power band and this and that. But, uh, yeah, just comparing that segment, it's kind of funny to see. Because that car is on full ethanol as well. Built motor. It's on F, FP something turbo. I don't know. He said it's a full frame, not a hybrid. Big old front mount on it. Anyway, it, it was fun. It was a good night. Anyway, what else I want to get about? DVV2 stuff about to show up or about to get ordered. 
Zero Three Four stuff about to show up. I really need to order rear end links. My rear end links are about shot. They're clunking and clanking. Uh, I saw Racing Line has a, a real neat type of set of uh, end links back there that that seem easier to like adjust. So I think we're gonna grab those next. Try those out. Also, I'm gonna leave a link down below to the Google Drive for uh, Gen 4 cars. So if you guys have a Gen 4 car and you want to submit your uh, 60 to 130, your eighth mile or quarter mile or eighth mile times, this is going to be, this is, we're, gonna, we're trying to track like everybody and all the countries and everything. There's already a good amount of people on there. Zero three four is on there, Unitronic, I mean, I am and a, a couple of MRC cars from overseas. So um, if you are a Gen 4 car or know somebody with a Gen 4 car, send them that Google Drive link. It's uh, to be a good spot to keep track of all, all the faster cars. And on that note, some car that goes by the name of VAG Performance, you can find them on YouTube and on Draggy. They got the first 10 second Gen 4 car as uh, 1098 at 124 with a 17360 foot. Compared to me, I did a 17660 foot, but 1118 at 124. So I just need that little bit of a low end. Um, I, need just, I just need a better launch. A little bit more boost on launch, a better launch, less slipping of the clutches, I think, um, and less tire spin. Um, the last time I went out, I was spinning all over the place. Oddly, even the one launch, like the, the rear end stepped out. <laughs> Um, and that's on the street. That's crazy to me. I never did that in my golf, but so yeah, didn't make it to the first, the first to be in the tens, but that's also a golf. So we could still be the first eight Y and we can still be the first North American, um, gen four car in the tens. I mean, that's kind of like a micro record in a way eh. for the North America. Yeah. It's kind of a micro record for the first eight Y. I mean, Motors are the same. Drivetrains are different. They do have the MAGA diff. We have the old diff, technically, kind of. So, anyway, that's all I got. I just want to get a little video. Oh, my God, I've been talking for 20 fucking minutes. That is crazy. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you on the flip-flop.